Lebanese Prime Minister Najib Makati mistook an aide to Georgia Maloney for the Italian Prime Minister herself when a delegation from Rome arrived in Beirut, Makati was waiting on the tarmac at Beirut airport for the Italian leader to descend the stairs from her plane, according to the national news. As one of Maloney's delegation descended ahead of her, Makati greeted her with a kiss on each cheek, apparently thinking she was the Italian Prime Minister. He was quickly informed that he had instead greeted Maloney's personal assistant Patricia Skirti, who looked somewhat similar to her. The Italian Prime Minister exited the plane soon after and was greeted with a handshake and a kiss on each cheek by Makati. National News notes that Maloney is in Beirut amid the continuing cross border conflict on. Lebanon's southern border between Israeli forces and the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah. Italian Nova News Agency reported that Maloney reaffirmed her country's commitment to supporting Lebanon's stability. Maloney also stressed the need to avoid the risk of escalation along the border with Israel and expressed her support for any initiative aimed at an immediate truce, according to the news agency. Give us the damn patriots! Ukrainian Foreign Minister The conflict between Moscow and Kiev could reach a stage where EU countries have to deploy combat troops to Ukraine in order to counter Russian advances, Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba has warned. In an interview with Politico, Kuleba complained about the decline in Western military aid for Kiev in recent months. Give us the damn patriots! He said, referring to the US-made air defense missile systems, which, he insisted, Kiev needs to target Russian jets that launch aerial guided bombs. Moscow's increased reliance on these upgraded munitions is why Ukrainian troops are losing positions, the foreign minister claimed. Kuleba once again expressed regret over the resistance of Republican lawmakers to attempts by the administration of US President Joe Biden to push through another $60 billion in assistance for Ukraine. He also dismissed a question about Germany's reluctance to supply long-range Taurus missiles, saying he is tired of answering this. Sorry. However, French President Emmanuel Macron, who said last month that he cannot exclude the possibility of soldiers from NATO countries being sent to Ukraine, avoided Kuleba's criticism. Kiev never asked for European combat troops' boots on the ground, but EU leaders need to get used to the idea that the day may come, Kuleba stressed. I'm perfectly aware that Europeans are not used to the idea of war, but this is a carelessness Europeans simply cannot afford neither for themselves nor their children. Because if Ukraine loses, Russian President Vladimir Putin will not stop, he said. Putin said earlier that claims by Kiev and its foreign backers that Russia will target NATO states are nonsense. However, in another interview, the president stressed that Moscow will treat Western troops as interventionists if they are deployed to Ukraine and would respond accordingly. The deputy chairman of the Russian state Duma, Pyotr Tolstoy, warned Macron last week against directly engaging Russia on the battlefield. We will kill all French soldiers who set foot on Ukrainian soil, every single one that comes, Tolstoy said. The Ukrainian armed forces hit the large landing ship Konstantin Olshi Ukrainian armed forces hit the large landing ship Konstantin Olshinsky with a Neptune missile. Ukrainian Navy spokesperson Dmitro Plitinchuk said this. Currently, this ship is not combat capable, Plitinchuk said on national television. He added that a Ukrainian-made Neptune anti-ship missile was used for this Ukraine, which still controls several hundred kilometers of Black Sea coastline despite Russian occupation of some of its southern regions, does not have any large warships however, it has conducted a series of successful strikes on Russia's Black Sea fleet in recent months using missiles or seaborne drones, there was no immediate comment from Russia. Russia took the Konstantin Olshinsky from Ukraine, along with most of Kiev's navy, when its troops occupied the Crimean Peninsula in 2014. Plitinchuk said, currently, this ship is not combat capable. There was no immediate comment from Russia. Russia took the Konstantin Olshinsky from Ukraine, along with most of Kiev's navy, when its troops occupied the Crimean Peninsula in 2014. For nine years it was dismantled for parts, and a year ago they decided to restore IT. In addition, the Speaker of the Naval Forces of the Ukrainian Armed Forces confirmed the defeat of the ship Ivan Kurs in Crimea. As for the Ivan Kurs, we can confirm the defeat of reconnaissance equipment in the assault part of the ship. That is, in fact, now he is not ready for combat. He cannot carry out the tasks as intended, said Dmitry Plitinchuk.